Well, hey, folks, what a bombshell was dropped in the Alec Murdoch murder case over in South Carolina. Stay tuned. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Profiling Evil. It's going to be quick tonight because we're going to be talking about the things that we discussed today while the trial was going on for Alec Murdoch over in uh, South Carolina. He's accused of murdering his wife, Maggie, and their son, Paul. It was a brutal murder, and if you haven't been following this case, I would suggest going back and checking things out. But for now, make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button and ringing the bell so you're getting all of our notifications. Now let's talk about what happened today. First and foremost, a major bombshell was dropped. When the, well, the prosecution came out swinging today as they went into the forensic examination of the cell phone data, Paul's and Maggie's. And uh, both sides were taking swings. But I'll tell you what, the home run was the prosecution. When they showed that video captured on Paul's camera as he was trying to get some images of his friend's dog, Tell. The dog had been injured and he was trying to get an image to send to his buddy so they could have their friend, a vet, figure out what's going on with the tail and what would be the best thing for that little chocolate lab. Well, while they were filming that, his dad is, a, is a, allegedly in the background speaking and some people are saying it was angry. Get it, get that. Make sure you go back to Court TV tonight and catch my response when this one came out. It's one of those rare times when I say, holy cow. <laughs> and what I kept saying over and over again is this one's going to boil down to whether believing is hearing or whether hearing is believing. But most people are weighing in saying they believe it was Alec Murdoch on that uh, audio which, folks, blows his alibi out of the water. Now, the next thing that was really kind of interesting is we talked about what happened to Maggie's cell phone. You remember, it was found in a ditch, and Julie Grant asked me today what my thoughts were on how that phone could have ended up where it did because the defense kept pounding the forensic examiner over whether that phone was tumbling end over end in a portrait mode or if it was swinging through the air. I think you'll be interested in my response. Let's catch this. Okay, well, this questioning is going on, uh, and it's kind of jumping around here. It's it's not super impactful. If I'm in the jury watching this, I, I, I find it kind of hard to, to follow and pay attention to. You've got to be clear in your lines of questioning, especially on a cross-exam. Get in, get out, make your points, find the deficiencies. Hone in on those deficiencies, exploit them all that you can, and then move on. Uh, so I want to bring in my, my guest for a, a question here about this technology and how it's kind of changing the game and maybe changing this trial. Mike King, a retired police commander and the host of the Profiling Evil podcast, is our guest on the show doing law enforcement analysis today. Uh, and Mike, I want to ask you about this cell phone technology that we keep seeing throughout this with this orientation. Who knew that a cell phone could record? How would you hold it if you're holding it upright in what's called portrait orientation or sideways, which is landscape that the phone takes note of that or if you're stepping with it? Yeah, this, this is really fun to watch unfolding because we're now seeing what they really can find and withdraw from that uh, database. And the, not only the direction the phone's facing, which you know you use every day when you're walking down the street, it tells you which direction you're facing, but I like this idea that they're throwing it out the window. I think it's more like a Frisbee and not end over end. It 
be like a cell. Commander, I want to ask you a question, please, about something that I know stood out to you and we were able to, you know, converse you with our team, you know, off camera a little bit as we were all watching the video together. And that was the defense attorney's focus on cross-exam on potential cell phone throwing and orientation changing by orientation, meaning, you know, portrait versus landscape. Uh, there we go. See, I have a nice graphic here. I was going to hold up my cell phone, do it old school, but we got the graphic to show everybody, which is fantastic. So um, those are the orientations we're talking about, just as the gentle uh, reminder. Uh, Commander, what stood out to you, please? I, I just put myself in the front seat of that car and I thought, how am I going to throw a phone out the door or out the window if I'm going to throw it? And am I going to throw that thing like this and have it catch the wind? Am I going to throw it so that it's spinning over end? Or am I going to chuck that thing like a Frisbee? And I'll tell you what, Julie, I'm going with the Frisbee. Yes, Commander. Yep. Just <laughs> like a Frisbee. I know. Yeah. Think about when it flings out of your hand unintentionally because you're, can I hold it like, hey, there like you that? Go. Yeah. So uh, appreciate it. Yeah, that was one of those things that it seemed like muddying the waters to me with that line of questioning just kind of done to make the jury think, oh, is that really uh, what happened? Because this evidence is so damaging, as we know. Um, Commander King, I am told we need to say goodbye to you at this juncture. You have some other commitments. Thank you for being so generous with your time with us today. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. And we can always listen to your podcast as well, the Profiling Evil podcast uh, that you host. Thank you. Well, there you go, folks. What are your thoughts on this one? If you were sitting on the jury, would you be leaning toward the defense or the prosecution on this one? And how would have today's information that they came out, especially that bombshell that Alec Murdoch, if you believe he's the voice on that audio from that video that was taken, wow, what happened to Alex Mur Alec Murdoch's uh, alibi? Completely changes the landscape of this case in my opinion i'm going to be looking for your comments down below and i hope you'll take time to share profiling evil with your friends hey folks really appreciate all your support of what we try to do here i hope you're listening to profiling evil on your favorite podcast platform we've been experiencing a huge number of downloads recently as we release season series one and two of the Profiling Evil Academy over on our uh, audio version. And make sure you're going back and watching the Academy series on YouTube. Especially if you're a Profiling Evil channel member, you'll be getting those 16 new videos that recently dropped. And since this case is so tightly tied to forensics on the locations of both Paul's and Maggie's phone, and we haven't yet heard what they've collected off of Alec Murdoch's phone, I'd like you to go back, and it's a long way back, to the Suzanne Morphew case when I talk about the drift, the drift that occurs when a mobile phone is in a single location, especially if the cell towers are a long ways away. And in the Murdoch case, the closest cell tower was eight miles away. The next, nine miles. And then you get out to 13, 14, 17 miles. How powerful was that connection to give us a certainty range that can be relied upon. That's going to be the real question. Thanks so much for your support of Profiling Evil. And we'll see you all soon at the next crime scene.